Hey everyone, welcome to the AZ104 exam preparation series. So until now, we have covered 180 questions and we will be starting with the 181th today. So almost reaching the double century. Now looking at the exam patterns, I have observed that many questions in the AZ104 real exams are being asked from the virtual machine. And that's the reason in today's episode, we will be focusing on virtual machines and the questions around the virtual machines. And not just that, I will also tell you how to pick the right keywords, how to pick the right hints in the question that will lead you to the correct answer. And not only that, my friends, towards the end of the video, I will ask you one question that will really help you to understand where exactly your preparation stands for AZ104 exam. So please do watch the video, do watch the last question that will really help you understand and tell you whether you need more preparations or not. So let's start today's video and cover some latest and the important questions on virtual machine and prepare for AZ104 exam. And also let me tell you that in the next episode, I'm going to focus on a very latest topic that is Microsoft Entra ID. And the reason is that many questions are being asked in AZ104 exam from the Microsoft Entra ID and not just AZ104, but also AZ900. So a lot of questions are coming from the Microsoft Entra ID. ID. So please do subscribe to the channel so that you are getting the timely notifications. And now what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Question number 181 part 31. The question is saying that you are creating an Azure virtual machine that will run Windows Server. Now as an Azure administrator, you must make sure that the virtual machine one will be the part of virtual machine scale set. Very important concept here. Virtual machine scale set. Now, which setting should you configure during the creation of the virtual machine? And your options are option A, availability options, option B, Azure spot instances, option C, management, and option D, region. Now, the question is simply telling you that you want to make sure as an Azure administrator that this virtual machine named as VM1, it needs to be the part of Azure virtual machine scale set. So as an Azure administrator, how do you configure the same? So these are the options available. Here, as I said, that you need to understand virtual machine skill set. And here you can understand all about the availability options for the Azure virtual machine. So now we are talking about the availability options that is exactly asked in the question as well. So here you can see we have concepts like availability zones and now comes the concept virtual machine skill set. And this is the concept they were talking about in the question as well. And here you can understand that Azure virtual machine skill set lets you create and manage a group of load balanced virtual machine and the number of virtual machine instances can automatically increase or decrease in response to the demand or defined schedule. So in a nutshell, Azure virtual machine skill set is a combination or a group of virtual machine that you can scale up and scale down depending upon your schedule or your demand. And this is the very important concept in case you're targeting for the high availability for your application. The wonderful part is that this allows you to centrally manage, configure and update all the virtual machines. And also I recommend you to also learn about the availability set, which is a related concept load balancer. So all of these concepts will really help you to understand how to achieve the high availability and how to set up for the same. And friends, I'm sure that with the documentation, you have already understood and figured out the answer. And that is option A availability options. So you must configure the Azure virtual machine skill set from the availability option. Now coming to the Azure spot instances, well, the spot instances, they're actually used to add the virtual machine with the discounted price. Now the region, this is not related to the Azure virtual machine skill set and the management setting. They allow you to configure the monitoring and the management options for the virtual machine. So this also is not the related answer. So this is why Azure availability option is the correct answer. Moving to the next question, question number 182. It says that you have an Azure subscription that contains a virtual machine named VM1 and a storage account named storage one. Now you need to ensure that this virtual machine can access the storage one by using the Azure backbone. So it's a new concept for you, probably for some of you. What should you configure? And your options are option A, VPN gateway, option B, peering, option C, a service endpoint, and option D, a routing table. Now think for a moment, my friends, we are talking about the virtual machine, the storage account, and we are also talking about the Azure backbone. 
So what according to you would be needed so that the virtual machine can access this storage option using the Azure backbone? Well, it is none other than the option C, a service endpoint. And this is because to enable the virtual machine to access the storage, storage one by using the private IP addresses, you actually need to use the service endpoint. See, the virtual network service endpoints provides a secure and a direct connectivity to Azure services over an optimized route and that route is called Azure Backbone Network and all the endpoints allows you to secure your critical Azure service resources to only your Azure virtual network. And yes, my friends, I request all of you to share your experiences with the real exam, those who have already cleared the exam and also those who are trying to attempt the renewal of the certification. And also in case you're still preparing for the first attempt of the exam, then please share what are the areas or what are the questions or the modules in the easy 104 syllabus that you are struggling with. I will try to include all the feedbacks or the questions from you in the next episodes so that we can really solidify our chances to clear the exam in the first attempt. And with that, let's move on to the next question. Question number 183. The question is saying that you have an Azure subscription that contains 100 virtual machines. Now you regularly create and delete virtual machines and you need to identify the unattached disk that can be deleted. So you are trying to figure out what are the unattached disks for these virtual machines that are not coming into the use. What should you do? And your options are option A from the Azure cost management view cost analysis. Option B from the Azure advisor modify the advisor configuration. Option C from the Azure storage explorer view the account management properties. And lastly option D from the Azure cost management view advisor recommendations. Now let's figure out what are the important section in this question. The very first keyword or the very first hint the question gives you that you are trying to regularly create and delete the virtual machines. And the next important section is this one where you want to identify unattached disks that can be deleted. And based on these inputs or these hints, I can tell you the correct answer for this question is option D from the Azure cost management, you should view the advisor recommendations. And how can you do that? Well, you have to come to the Azure portal and in the Azure portal, you come to this home screen and there you need to reach out to this cost management or billing. And once you reach here, you will see this kind of window coming up. And here in this window, you have to click to this option, which says cost management. Once you click on this, you will see multiple options given here. And here you have to select this advisor recommendation. So once you do that, you will land up to this section, which is the advisor recommendation. And here you can see my friends, all the cost management, all the cost recommendation. And let me tell you, Azure Advisor is one of the very important service in case you're working as an Azure administrator. So you will be spending a lot of time on Azure Advisor. So do you really understand what is Azure Advisor? And in what sense it differs from the Azure Monitor? In case you do not and want to learn it, then sit right back here as I'm going to take a question that will clear all of your doubt. What is Azure Advisor and what is Azure Monitor? And for now, let's jump onto the next question. Question number 184 that says that you have an Azure subscription that contains a virtual machine named VM1. Now this virtual machine named VM1, this requires volume encryption for its operating system and the data disk. Now you create an Azure key vault named Vault1 and you need to configure Vault1 to support the Azure disk encryption for the volume encryption. Now which setting should you modify for the Vault1? And your options are option A, keys, option B, secrets, option C, access policies, and option D, security. Okay, so my friends, could you guess the right keywords or the hint given in the question? Well, it is this one which says volume encryption. And based on this, I can tell you the correct answer for this question is option C, access policies. So let me tell you to enable the support for the Azure disk encryption, you need to modify the Azure policies for the key vaults. And what will it do? Well, this provides an option to enable the access to the Azure disk encryption for the volume encryption. And why I'm saying that? Well, let's check out the Microsoft documentation. So here is the Microsoft documentation. The title is create and configure a key vault for the Azure disk encryption on Windows virtual machine. You can read it out all in detail, but I will jump to the right section here. So here you can see that we are given with three steps. Let me zoom a little. So here you can see that we are given with these three steps. The first one is creating a resource group if needed. Then the second one is creating a key vault, which is already in the question already created. And the third step is setting the key vault advanced access policies. And that's why access policies is the right answer. 
And now let's jump on to the next question, question number 185. And here I will tell you what are the differences between the Azure Monitor and the Azure Advisor. So let's read the question first. It says that you have an Azure subscription that contains several hundred virtual machines. Now you need to identify which virtual machine are underutilized. What should you do? And your options are option A, Azure Advisor. Should you use Azure Advisor or option B, Azure Monitor or option C, Azure Policies or option D, Azure Recommendations. Okay, so in these kind of questions, it's super important to understand what exactly the question is asking you to do. So here you can see the important section is underutilized. So we want to identify virtual machines that are underutilized. So what do you think is the appropriate service for that Azure Advisor or Azure Monitor? Well, the correct answer is option A, Azure Advisor. Now friends, I know that a lot of you are confused between Azure Advisor and Azure Monitor. And trust me, there are a lot of questions in the AZ-104 exam around these two concepts. So you really need to understand what are the exact differences and when to use which service. So let's check out some documentation on both of these concepts. And then I will summarize the entire concept for you. So here you can see, first of all, we have Azure Advisor. Now, what is Azure Advisor? Well, according to Microsoft, Azure Advisor is a digital cloud assistant that really help you to follow the best practices to optimize the Azure deployments. And what exactly you can do with it? Well, you can get proactive, actionable and personalized best practices recommendation. So you get all of these recommendation from Azure Advisor. And not only that, this Azure Advisor, it really helps you to improve the performance, security, reliability of your application. And why so? Because Azure Advisor gives you the recommendation following which you can improve your performance, security and reliability. And also you get the recommendation with proposed action in line. And what does this mean? Well, when you get the recommendation, when you click on this, you will also see how to implement the same. And of course, in the same documentation, you can really learn about the Azure Advisor in quite some detail. But for now, let me quickly jump to the Azure Monitor. And here you can see Azure Monitor. This is the documentation. So what is Azure Monitor? Well, Azure Monitor, as the name suggests, it's a comprehensive monitoring solution for collecting, analyzing and responding to the monitoring data from your cloud and on-premises environment. And this is very important, my friends, that you understand this is not just for the cloud. This can be also used for the on-premises environments. And what can you use Azure Monitor for? Well, you can maximize the availability and performance of your application and the services. Okay, so I see that some of you are still confused. So let me summarize in my own words. Okay, so first of all, Azure Advisor and Azure Monitor, both are very essential tools in Microsoft Azure ecosystem. Now, each of these tools concentrate on a very specific purpose, starting with the Azure Advisor. And this is the personalized cloud consultant that helps you follow the best practices to optimize your Azure deployments. And this will help you analyze your resources, your configuration, what are your usage patterns to provide you recommendations for improving availability, performance, security, and also the cost effectiveness of your Azure resources. Now, let me tell you the recommendations from the Azure Advisor can be broadly categorized into five areas. The first one is reliability. Second one is security. Third one is performance. Fourth one is cost. And last one is operational excellence. So in a nutshell, Azure Advisor is the tool that provides you all the best practices, all the best recommendation directly coming from Azure which can be divided into all these five broad categories. And now coming to the Azure Monitor. Well, Azure Monitor, on the other hand, is a comprehensive solution for collecting, analyzing and acting upon the telemetry or the logs from your cloud or on-premises environments. So friends, all of our application, even the appliances today, they generate lot of telemetry, lot of log files, and these log files you can feed into the Azure Monitor. And then the Azure Monitor can really help you to understand what exactly is going under the hood for your application, your appliances. So by digesting all this telemetry, all these logs, Azure Monitor can really help you do some more technical in-depth analysis, provide some in-depth monitoring capabilities, including platform metrics, alerting and notification features. So in a summary, while the Azure Advisor focuses on providing optimization recommendation, on the other hand, Azure Monitor offers detailed monitoring and diagnostics capability to keep your application services running smoothly. 
So I hope this small comparison will really help you to understand what are the difference between these two important services. And I really encourage you all to bring some more examples and how you use these two services. This will really help you to understand clear your thoughts and will really help others to understand the use cases for both the services. So friends, I hope you like the today's questions. In case you have some feedback or some counter view on any of the question, please do comment in the comment section below. And in case you're looking for the PDF files containing all the questions, all the answers and the hints of the questions, not only from the Microsoft Azure, but also from the AWS world, then you can consider joining the community membership or otherwise you can simply email me at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.